mentioned that this organization is a very uh, difficult and uh, trying times in the city and, and around the world globally. And it came up with some great initiatives. Uh, one of them was actually the Inquart, which hopefully will have a legacy of its own. And that's where the uh, Aaron Perry Innovation and Business Award came from. And uh, this is a tremendous, tremendous human being and a great guy and a great friend. So thank you. And actually, they give out this award. I'm going to call up our president of Mount Sinai Medical Center, Steve Sommerreich, uh, to give this award. Steve. Thank you, Jason, and good afternoon, everyone. Warren Zinn is being recognized today because of his professional achievements and his philanthropic contributions have made a tremendous difference in our community. Warren learned about the automotive business by working with his father, David, uh, who's, by the way, been a trustee of Mount Sinai National Center, a great supporter for, for many years. Everyone knows Dave Zinn was a pioneer in the automotive business in his own right. And in 1976, Warren began his own enterprise, using his first and middle name to identify his company. Today, more than 35 years later, the Warren Henry Auto Group encompasses nine franchise locations around Miami-Dade and Palm Beach counties, and also in Ocala. Warren is successful, but for Warren, success is not a destination, it is a journey. His business pursuits have been extraordinary. And along the way, he has shared his success by giving back to many in our community. Mount Sinai Medical Center has been one of the beneficiaries of the Zinn family, family philanthropy. And Warren continues that legacy today. He also is deeply involved in numerous community organizations and philanthropic groups. Most recently, Warren was honored with the Voting Country Fund Final Award for his generous contributions and commitment to the South Florida community. And it was a well-deserved honor. Family is very important to all of us at Mount Sinai Medical Center. We are proud of our dedicated family of physicians, nurses, employees, and the outstanding care and services they help us provide to our community each and every day. And we sincerely appreciate the support of our philanthropic family, a group of community-minded individuals that includes Warren and the entire Zinn family. Warren leads by example, and I am proud to know him and call him a friend. Before I call Warren up to the stage, I would like to direct your attention to the TV screens for a glimpse into the Warren Henry Auto Group. Over the last 35 years, the Warren Henry Auto Group has expanded from a single Volvo dealership in 1976 to nine luxury brand locations that reach from Miami-Dade County to Central Florida and is a family-run organization that cares about people and quality. It will continue to grow in the years to come, but will always stand for the same things, integrity, loyalty, and quality. The Warren Henry name has a reputation all its own. It means the highest quality in customer service, satisfaction, and superior automotive products. As one of the original 52 Infinity dealers in the U.S., Miami's first Land Rover dealer, and one of the first Fisker dealers anywhere, innovation and leadership are also Warren Henry qualities. To quote Larry Zinn, I really admire my father's deep loyalty and his strong foundation of relationships. To me, that's one of the major contributors to his success and longevity of the industry. Warren Henry, always. You've always been one of us, a dreamer, a driver, a car person. And we've always been here. Warren Henry family has a long history in South Florida. Thanks to you, we're still making history today. Just think of us as part of the family. For over 35 years, always the best price, always the best service, always more ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, it is 
my great pleasure to introduce a member of the Mount Sinai Medical Center family and the recipient of the Aaron B. Perry Innovation and Business Award, Warren Zinn. Well, well, thank you very much. I'm very honored to be here. Uh, Warren Henry's in, in case you wonder where that came from. Um, I'm a little met, honestly, because uh, Steve did my speech. <laughs> Uh, we didn't speak to him, and uh, we didn't know. Him, and I don't, uh, I don't want to be too repetitive. But uh, just to, to give you a little background, and thanks uh, to the Shocker family, to the to Bank United, to City National, to the two banks that still like us. Uh, I, I would like to uh, to tell you as a. Uh, a Miami Beach native, resident, and business owner uh, that I started in the car business at the age of about eight years old when I used to go to work with my dad on Saturdays, uh, which he was at a Chevy dealership uh, on the used car lot, and I helped him with the chores of getting the business started for the day. Uh, not long after that, uh, on Alton Road, my father became the uh, first Toyota dealer in the state of Florida, a place where I had my first car accident at the <laughs> age of 11 when a uh, fence ran into the stick shift car I was driving three times. <laughs> and there's somebody here that actually witnessed that and never did tell my father, by the way. Um, um, I've worked in every position, every aspect of the, uh, of the dealership uh, from the time I was uh, growing up and had enrolled in uh, Northwood University in Midland, Michigan, a school that specialized in automotive program, accounting, business management, and marketing. And at the time in my senior year, uh, my father and my grandfather uh, found a fledgling Volvo dealership that was for sale. And uh, although I was still in my senior year in college, uh, this was an opportunity of a lifetime for me. And that was my start. Uh, I was uh, presented with a rundown dealership in a rundown area on 5th Avenue and 36th Street. The price was $36,000, of which I didn't have and we arranged to pay it off over the course of a year. So 1976 was my first official year in the business, and uh, today I'm happy to say that our company encompasses nine locations in Florida, franchise locations, five of which are right here in Dade County, so any one of you could go there on your way home. <laughs> Uh, in continuing my uh, journey through the industry, it's been my goal to stay up with the times and create an environment which is known for superior products, community involvement, helpful, courteous, and caring associates dedicated to building client relationships for generations. I strive to match my clients' expectations and hope to keep everybody within the family. Moving forward, in 2012, the Warren Henry brand will bring to the table new initiatives to provide more Warren Henry customers in the community, giving them rewards, advantages for the loyalty to our brand, our company, and of course, the local businesses. And to prove how much I love it here in Miami, we've re-signed Chris Bosch, from the Miami Heat as our spokesperson for the Warren Henry brand, so they better win this year. <laughs> With continued success 
It is my commitment to continue the support for the Miami Beach community, bringing new innovative technology to South Florida, such as Volvo's highest tested safety ratings, the scientific advancement and electricity of the ecologically friendly Fisker, the car was parked out right on the ramp in case you missed it. Uh, further, the Warren Henry Group will continue its involvement with Mount Sinai. The chambers we belong to, such as Aventura Marketing Council, Keep Miami Gardens Beautiful, continue to do our new car showings and events in all the beautiful hotels on Miami Beach, and continue our support of the churches and synagogues here in the local community. Four years ago, my son Larry graduated from Northwood University with all the degrees that I had and with the same enthusiasm I have for the auto business. His ideas are much better and much fresher than mine are today. Currently, he is executive manager of Warren Henry Infinity Dealership in North Bay, the third largest Infinity dealership in the world and the second largest in the United States. For a third generation of Zins in the business, the torch has been lit and it's getting ready to be passed along. Remember, always, Warren Henry. Choice 
and I think you've uh, gotten very involved in the community and become a, a great leader in this community. Um, is there anything in particular you can say how community involvement goes along with business? You can't have one without the other. Uh, you see, with the presentation we've had, when the community suffers, there is no business. So I think the best way to end this is high tides raise all boats. Michael Milberg used that when he was chairman a little bit, but actually, uh, remember President Kennedy said that we're all in this together. We all do well together. We're in a community that will strive and support one another. A round of applause for our, our leaders. The hardest part of this is, as everybody in this room, you know me, is that we have a winner today that we're going to be giving an automobile to. And I have no idea who the winner is, and I've asked 50 times and I have not told him. So, I think it's very exciting to give out this award. This award, over the past three months, members of the community have sent in applications and nominated companies for the Chamber's newest pre prestigious award, the Warren Henry Small Business of the Year Award. This award will be given out each year to honor individuals who have dedicated their time to the community while driving their companies to reach outstanding achievements in management and innovation over the past couple of years. The six top finalists have been selected by the chairman's, Chamber's Chairman Circle members and the ballots have been sealed and locked into a safe box for the winner to be announced today. The box was actually under Valerie's desk and I was actually asked to go away many times. So. Um, the remaining five finalists will receive 72 hours in a Warren Henry Jaguar because similar to the Warren Henry motto, all are best in class. So, you ready to call them up and we're going to identify them, I guess, Valerie, is that how we're going to do this? Actually, I guess we look at the screen to see the finalists. The first one, Brian. Brian, are you here? Actually, come on up. We're going to call everybody up, Valerie. How are we going to Patrick, Kevin, Brian, standing here. Stand right there. Everyone's going to move here to the table. Actually, Jason. Uh, you come out, Jason, you're here too, right? That's yeah. yeah, my guest we have. Dan Brown. Dan Brown. Sheila Duffy Lehrman. Yeah. And I think we have one more coming. Jeff Brady. And, oh, and Bill Hansen, I'm sorry, Bill. Oh, yeah, Bill. Oh, yeah, Bill Hansen, Bill Hansen came with me. I have not a chance to know everybody who's actually standing personally and intimately. And they're, besides running great businesses, they're just great individuals. And they're just great community supporters. And I'm honored and privileged to be their friends and their colleagues. Thank you for everyone for all that you've done. And actually, Warren, Showtime. <laughs> Are you going to read? Uh, actually, please stand. I mean, and actually, everybody receives like a car for the weekend. And uh, thank you very much. And the winner for the car for the year is Brian Scheinblum from Tampa, Massachusetts. Thank you, everybody. Brian, come on up and give us a, a photo. Everybody, thank you for coming. Have a great day. Actually, I'm going to call Alan Lynch to our closing remarks, our incoming chairman. Alan, come on up. Come on, come on, give a speech, Alan. Come on, give a thank you, people, Brian. Actually, uh... Hold on one second. Everybody, give me one minute, please. I'm sorry, I broke real big. Brian has a few words. It's exactly city national. Right, right. Nice to meet you. Thank you, Sam. Obviously, this is not possible without a great staff. Thank you. Picture with all the finalists. It's a basket. <laughs> yeah.
Allison Colbert from the JW Marriott Miami. That's it for Bank United. Allison, you here? Okay, cool, thank you. Right, well, everybody, thank you very much for coming. This has been a great day, a great event every year. Just the finalists. Finalists for a picture. We're done. <laughs> I'd like to recognize uh, several people in the room. We have several people, there's an institution to this organization. We have Mount Sinai Medical Center, who's been a member of the 90th Chamber of Commerce for over 50 years. We have uh, FPNL in the room that's been a member for over 50 years. Uh, City National Bank, I believe, has been a member for over 50 years of this institution. I'd just like to take a minute to recognize the support they have given to this community. I also want to recognize uh, Gary Person who's in the room as well, who's going to be this year's uh, High Tide uh, Award, sponsored by State National Bank. Gary Gerson was also a uh, past honorary assistant of the Year Award, as long as here. Uh, Russell Gabba is also an honorary of our dinner gala as well, the Gabba family. And this year we actually are honoring Steve Sonreich as a uh, citizen of the year, also uh, from outside the Medical Center, what they do for this community. So once again, it's just instills the importance of us all coming together and working together for a common goal. I'd like to now recognize. The Honorable uh, James McDonald Standing Board of Governor Award. This award is given by the current Board of Governors to an outstanding Board of Governor. To be eligible to win this award, you have to be at least a, a board member for five consecutive years. This year, the award has been given to our own elite player from FPNL. So come on up and we have to have our elite player on the Medicaid Award Committee with me, and we come on up. Actually, the recipient of the James McDonald Award, so it's passing the torch. Come on up, Alan. Thank you, Jason. It's really an honor and a pleasure to be up here to present this award. This is such a special award. Jason told you about what this award really is, but it's the most meaningful award in this organization. And I'm truly lucky, honored, and privileged, privileged to be up here to present Aletha with this award. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit about her, but I get to see her a couple times a month, and it's always a pleasure. She always brightens the room, makes it a special place, and it's just a real honor to have her on any board that you're involved in. Okay. Aletha's famous saying, so long as we love, we serve. There's no greater testimony to Aletha's love for this community than her unselfish service, on this very social, civic, and business board she serves. Aletha is an area manager in external affairs in Florida Power and Light Company, the principal subsidiary of Next Era Energy, one of the country's largest electricity-related services companies with annual revenues of more than $16 billion. Yes, a billion would be. Its principal subsidiary, Florida Power and Light Company, is one of the largest investor-owned utilities in the U.S., serving 9 million people in Florida. Aletha has the distinguished honor of serving on Barry University Board of Trustees and Florida State Conference of the NAACP Board of Advisors. She also serves as Vice Chair of the Abitur Bargaining <coughs> Council and is on the boards of the Miami Beach Chamber of Commerce, Miami, Miami Dade Chamber of Commerce, Greater North Miami Chamber of Commerce, as well as the Women's Fund of Miami and the Carrie Meek Foundation. Also, she's a member of the South Florida Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. She just completed a two-year term as chair of the board of the North Dade Regional, uh, North Dade Regional Chamber of Commerce. Formerly, she served on the board of Aventura Hospital and Medical Center, board of directors of Community Crusade Against Drugs, and completed a three-year term on the Florida Bar Grievance Committee 11A. Aletha has been a member of the Miami Chamber of Commerce Board of Governors for 12 years and has facilitated FPNL's partnership with our Education Foundation and sponsorship of the Elaine Weisberg Luncheon for many years. The Miami Beach Education Foundation is our own in-house 501c3 not-for-profit 
which raises money to support scholarships for Beach High students and the Miami Beach International Baccalaureate programs for the city of Miami Beach. It's truly a pleasure to serve on the board with Aletha. And without further ado, I'd like to present her with the James McDonald Outstanding Board of Governors Award. Chamber of Commerce's chairman of the board and was a four-term Miami Beach commissioner. 
It was during that time that Miami Beach started to become the vital city it is today. And although I was not alive during that time, I always knew how much he loved and cared about the betterment of the city. Thank you. Not only was he involved with the Chamber of Commerce, but he was president of the Miami Beach Kiwanis Club, the Miami Beach Bar Association, the Miami Ski Club, and he was involved with countless local charities, including the Children's Cancer Caring Center. His love for Miami Beach was unsurpassed. Thank you so much for honoring my dad. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Thank you for honoring my dad for his lifetime service to the community. It is an honor for my mother to die to accept this award on his behalf. But it's a shame that my father is not alive to receive it, because I know for a fact that his thank you speech would have had all of you hysterically laughing as he shared stories about his career as a commissioner. Thank you. Association, my Fraternity Alumni Association, Alpha Epsilon Pi, and of course Chairman of the Miami Beach Chamber of Commerce. But the culmination of his years of voluntary service was being elected to four consecutive terms on the Miami Beach City Commission. But Billy was elected at one of the lowest points in the history of the City of Miami Beach, and it's no coincidence that by the conclusion of his fourth term, Miami Beach was well on its way to becoming the world-class city that it is today. In addition to Billy loving his family and his friends and his community, Billy loved to have fun. It wasn't unusual to see Billy with those dark glasses and uh, Jill with her tight leather pants uh, riding his Harley uh, and enjoying the South Beach that he once helped to shape. You know, if he were here today and seen this event, uh, he would want us to recognize the past chairs of this Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and much to the delight of the audience, the way he would get your attention, he wasn't your, your typical master of ceremonies. Uh, instead of uh, doing a little drum roll or whatever, you guys remember, and you said it, Michael, you, know, you asked me if I had the spoons. You know, Billy would pull out his spoons, and I remember this. And uh, he would make sure he got your attention, but he was much better at this than I was to get everybody's attention. And uh, Billy, if you're uh, looking down on me right now and listening to this, uh, I hope you will forgive me. I am a singer and not a spooner. Um, but you did a great job and you know how to get everybody's attention. So what I'd like to do at this time is to introduce uh, those men and women that are with us today that have served in the capacity of chair of the Miami Beach Chamber of Commerce. Please stand to be recognized. Hold your applause. It takes them a while to stand. <laughs> so from 1974, the chairman of the board, Barton Goldberg, hold your applause. And celebrating, the next gentleman uh, served in 1976 and is celebrating his 94th birthday next week, and that's Leon Manning. Ira Gillard. 1988, A. Anthony Tony Naboa. Lucia Doherty, who served this organization when she was 18 years old. She was chair of the board in 1990. Meryl K. Schwartz, as beautiful as ever, 1999. Now we get up to the youngest. Like Michael Milbert, you're one of the kids, you know, 2001. <laughs> Alan Randolph, 2004. Aaron Perry, 2008. And Jason Rowe, our newest fearless leader, 2010. Now, thank you all for all of you.
Uh, what we're going to do now is take a look at the monitor, and we're going to hear from a few of Billy's uh, friends and colleagues. Uh, first, we're going to hear from former mayor of Miami Beach, Malcolm Frommer, if this is in the right order, and then from past chair, Ira Giller, who's with us today, and then from one of Billy's dearest, the longtime friends, the Honorable Harvey Rubin. Please.